Hi everybody, this is Bob again. This is part two on the Paraset construction. Now this particular uh, Paraset I was determined to build with parts I had on hand in the junk box. So I didn't buy anything for this Paraset. So uh, you will see there's quite a bit of deviation from what the original is. And uh, that's okay. I, I do that quite often and, and I come up with a Paraset that works really good and I had a lot of fun building it and like I say I used what I had and I like to do that. You'll see some deviations here. First of all this project started when I found this real nifty box at a resale shop across from Town and Country Shopping Center in Mishawaka. It was the only one I'd ever seen. And something you may notice here is this 6V6 tube. I made the hole bigger down here and the tube actually fits down through this, this plate, this chassis plate, fits down through it and by doing that it's, it's uh, like uh, 3 eighths of an inch lower down there to the socket. And what happens is now I can close the lid on the Paraset without removing the tubes. I like that function and I didn't like having to take the tubes and then you got clips up in here you fasten the tubes into and then the clips uh, make marks on the tubes and everything but if you do that lower the socket I just put 3 8 inch spacers you could make those spacers like out of quarter inch uh, uh, copper uh, water tubing or something you know just cut them out put a little longer bolts on here to the uh, socket and I had to uh, look around for a socket that had a little bit bigger ears on it so that I had enough room to fit this down in there. But it worked out nice. I did find a socket. It's a ceramic socket. The other two sockets are black ones that actually came out of an old PA system amplifier that was just nothing but junk. And uh, I robbed uh, the sockets out of it some time ago. And that I used two of those in here. And what else am I going to comment on? This is a neat little telegraph key uh, that was given to me by my friend Pete and Elkhart. Thank you, Pete. It really worked out great for this project. I uh, made a change here. I put a SO239 in here so I can connect my antenna right to it. I also made a change on the tank circuit. Uh, it, the tank circuit in this is a toroid. I think I got about 60 turns of... Uh, of number 18 wire on the toroid and then uh, then there are three three turns uh, to uh, that go right direct to the SO239 and by doing that I eliminated one of the variable capacitors they have two variable capacitors in the original Paraset circuit uh, with two bulbs and that is all because they use those with a long wire antenna and not many people use long wire antennas anymore. Most people use 50 ohm antennas. So by just putting that link on there, you eliminate the one variable capacitor. Uh, you'll notice I got two knobs here. That's because the variable capacitor that I eliminated is still down under there. And it doesn't do anything. The one that tunes is over here. So you only need one capacitor when you put that link in there. And the toroid really worked great. Here's my crystal. I ground that one myself some time ago. It's for 3552 kilohertz because I've got a good friend in Mishawaka, Dan, who gets on that frequency working CW. And he was the first guy I worked with this uh, Paraset. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, here is the tuning. You will notice down here, you see I've got marked on there. The little pointer on the knob is pointed at 3552. This is a trimmer capacitor out of an old car radio. And it turns many turns, if you're familiar with those. It goes round and round and round, which gives you a, a tuning, very slow tuning rate, which is really nice. And you don't need to have the vernier dial or any of that stuff. Uh, I just marked it on here with a little uh, black, black uh, permanent marker, a really small Sharpie permanent marker. And I'll tell you something about those permanent markers, too, that a lot of people don't know. If you want to take those letters off, all you got to do is put a little bit of alcohol on a Q-tip and just wipe over it, or a small rag, you can just wipe that right off. So uh, it's nice to mark things like that. This aluminum plate 
is an old license plate. It was a 2007 boat trailer license plate. A lot of license plates these days are made with uh, just the numbers just painted on them. And so I'm going to pull this off here. Well, I was going to turn it on and I'll let you uh, let you see it in operation here. I did not pre-try it. Uh, I just, yeah, I got B plus there. You can see the uh, neon bulb is on. And let's see. Um, it should be tuned up from from last time as soon as the tubes warm up here. Can't guarantee. Oh, there goes the antenna. But I'm not seeing. There's my tuning light. And you can see now these bulbs, there's three of these bulbs here. These are number 313 bulbs. It takes 5 watts to light a number 313 bulb. But uh, you can see these are lighting and there's three of them in parallel here. I use the 313 bulbs for a load, but look at how bright that little... Now that little bulb is just in series with the output here. And so you just turn it off. These are center off switches. That's because what I got at the ham fest was center off switches. Anyhow, uh, that little switch just goes across the bulb, turns it off. And you notice here how much brighter those are when I turn that off. Now I'll turn it back on again. Okay, now I'll turn it off again. Now that little bulb in series is a tuning indicator. Because when I've got the antenna on, I don't have these other bulbs on here. So let's see here. Let's And this little teeny, this little teeny uh, key has got a an on. There we go. I can flip that down there and it stays on. And now I can tune. See there? Okay. So that's a handy way to do it. And the bulb is just stuck through a grommet there. You can see it's just stuck through a grommet. I do have a little socket on it though. Uh, on the inside. Now let's take that off. I hope this video doesn't go too long. I'm at 14 minutes now. Now that's the pin I touched right there and got myself one heck of a shock. I've got a bleeder on there now and it takes about 30 seconds for it to run down. So I'm not going to touch that pin right away. I can grab these two tubes here and I can pull this thing out. And I wanted to show you here, this is how the chassis plate is mounted. That's half inch aluminum angle. And uh, that angle uh, I got at uh, Big Box uh, Hardware Store. I don't remember which one it was, but it wasn't very expensive. I think about $4 for three feet of aluminum angle, half inch. Then it's got a couple of screws going through here. This holds this angle piece up here. And you got screws on the back and the other sides. Now those screws go through little holes that I threaded in the angle. I used a 632 uh, die and threaded the holes. I threaded these too. You will notice this license plate. This has got the original holes here and here. And then I drilled a couple more here and here on each end. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. You got eight mountings on that plate. Now let's take a look at the circuit. I put a, I put a handle on the box too here and some rubber feet underneath. Okay, here's the extra capacitor that we're not using anymore. I just jumpered it right there. And to change the original circuit, here you are with one, two, three turns on the toroid. And I don't know exactly how many turns are on that toroid. I tell you what, I'm going to count those turns and I'll put those, that, that information in the description. Uh, so that you can get the number of turns. But that is a red toroid. Uh, and it's got a, uh, it's got a uh, half inch hole in the center there. Okay. This is the receiver coil. Uh, that's just an old 5 eighths inch diameter uh, tunable coil with a slug in it. And I don't know how many turns I got there. I just kept putting them on there. I put a whole bunch on there and then I, I used my grid dipper to find out where it was at. And then uh, took turns off. The, uh, this is my regeneration control, which is a 
10,000 ohm, 10 turn pot. And boy does that work nice for, for regeneration. Or as the old timers put on these, they call it reaction. You can see the old letters from the boat license plate, 2007 license plate there. And here's my 330,000 ohm, 30, 330, ohm resistor uh, to bleed off these capacitors here, which are 10 microfarads at 450 volts. They called for uh, two microfarads in the circuit. Uh, I put 10 microfarads in there. Uh, why? Because I had them. They were very small, uh, much smaller than the originals. Uh, this is the two and a half uh, millihenry RF choke there, one of them. And the other one, believe it or not, is these two right here. These were small. Uh, this is a 2.2 and this is a 200 uh, millihenry. This is a 2.2 microhenry. Uh, the two of them in series gave me 2.5 millihenries as measured on my little uh, handheld uh, inductance meter. Yeah, and here's the little the little miniature toggle switches. Here's one of them here for changing the band. Uh, this is for uh, 80 meters here. This this is a trimmer capacitor for 80 meters. And I just cut that in with the switch here. You can see right there. Uh, there's a lead going from there to the switch. And I just cut that one into ground. And uh, that lowers the frequency of the tank coil for 80 meters. And uh, I used various capacitors. That I, this is a point one that I had that was very large. Uh, here's another one that's quite small. I used what I got. And uh, what else is I going to point out? Oh, this transformer is a 70 volt. I see a little piece of solder on there. This is a 70 volt line transformer. They're commonly used on speakers. You see a lot of these 8 inch speakers in, uh, in office buildings and things. Each one of those has got a 70 volt line transformer in it. When you send sound into a building, you got to have a way to power each speaker separately. And they use these transformers. They're quite inexpensive, and you can buy those at electronics places. It's a 70 volt line transformer. It's got a primary with a very high impedance. Uh, I measured it and compared it with a 10,000 ohm uh, audio output transformer used in a radio, and it's, uh, it's almost the same. So I use the 70 volt connections. Uh, they go to the uh, 6SK7 audio tube and a B plus on the one side and then I use the uh, 4 ohm output or yeah the 4 ohm output on the uh, on the uh, speaker side goes directly to my speaker connections my speaker jacks there's one here for quarter inch and one here for eighth inch and I've been using a Beats headphone a Dr. Dre I think it is Beats headphone and boy does that sound nice on this Okay, what else was I going to talk about? Yeah, and I wanted to show you right here. This is the trimmer capacitor. Let me get it right there. The trimmer capacitor right there that came out of an old car radio. And it had a shaft on it. And I used that. And you see that comes up. Goes to this knob here. And that, that makes, right here, that makes my tuning. And you can see right there where I marked 3552. That's where I was using it, and it works really nice. It spreads that out it, like a band spread, and, uh, and like I say, you can mark right on there with your uh, marking, permanent marking pen. A uh, little, real small Sharpie. Now here's the tuning for the receiver, the slug tuning. I tuned it up on 40, then I put this uh, jumper capacitor in here. Where's it at? Right here. This capacitor here is put into the circuit with this little toggle switch right there, mini toggle switch, it's a black one, right under there. And that cuts that capacitor into ground, which lowers it for 80 meters. So that's how you change bands. And what else could I mention here? I guess that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I used the schematic right here, we've been building it. And uh, like I say, I eliminated that one, uh, that one capacitor. That's the receiver section. One capacitor here, 
I eliminated and I eliminated the two bulbs in the output tank circuit and just put the one single bulb in series to the antenna connector, the SO239. And like I say, this is the schematic that I used. And uh, let's see, I got that off of uh, the internet just by going on Google and looking up Paraset. You will find several schematics of the Paraset on Google. And I did modify things quite a bit. The capacitors here are called for two microfarads at 10 volts. And let's see, is this thing this thing's going to run out pretty soon here, so I better uh, I, I see it blinking at me, so I better get this done. Uh, two microfarads at 450. I used 10 microfarads at 450 uh, instead of those. They call for 002 capacitors in here. I use .01s. They work just fine, like here. And then uh, let's see. Uh, I was going to show you one here on the on the key here someplace. Yeah, right here. There's a 002 right there on the cathode of the 6V6. And I'm going to show you real quick how I how I sunk the 6V6 tube right there with two 3 8 inch spacers. Sunk it down in so that I can close the lid on this thing. All right, I guess that's it. These little toggle switches work great. They're all center off because that's what I bought at the ham fest. Okay, I guess that's it. Uh, good luck if you want to want to build one of these. It's a fun project, a real fun project, and you'll find a lot of information on the internet on the parasets. Uh, what's the, what else? I guess that's it. You guys have a super super day and uh, keep healthy. Seventy threes.